Good morning. Today's reading is from Luke chapter 12, verses 13 through 21. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or an arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly, and he thought to himself, What should I do? For I have no place to store all of my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns, and I will build larger ones. And there I will store all of my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, and drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Good morning. Can we all pray together? Let us pray. God, we give you thanks. We are asking the Spirit of God to be with us, and guiding us and leading us and transforming each one of us, opening our hearts, opening our ears to listen to the Word of God. As we listen, as we obey, as we uh, 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 go into a deeper place, please guide us and lead us and teach us and transform each one of us. God, we love you. In Jesus' name, everybody say amen. Amen. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 12, Jesus covers uh, quite a few uh, topics before getting into a parable of the rich fool. I guess there are thousands and thousands of followers of Jesus Christ gathered together to listen to what Jesus, uh, uh, you know, speaking to the to the. Uh, on the, on the Sermon of the Mount, and before Jesus dives into verse 13 through 15, the attitude in regard and material positions. In verse 1 and 3, Jesus talks about attitude for followers of Jesus Christ. It's all about a warning to beware of hypocrisy. You know, Jesus is using his illustration and, and, and east. You know, let me tell you this. I know the lady who is using uh, uh, East every day. She's, she's my wife. You know, she knows how to use East, and then she knows how to how to bake. And but you know what? Uh, would you please show me the picture? This is a this is a bread in the Middle East. They use how to use East. When you use when you put East on the flour. It will be big. It will be a big bread. Be careful because inside, show me another one, it's empty. So Jesus is using illustration. Jesus is using an example east. Be careful. Watch out because it looks really delicious. It's really big, but inside it's empty and dry. And it sometimes it's just it's a hollow. It, there's nothing inside. Don't get caught up in self-righteousness. Don't get caught up in greed and pride. You can be you can't be a Sunday Christian, but not fully committed 24 hours and seven days Christian. So verse 13, what does the man request of Jesus? Teacher. Tell me, tell, tell my brother to divide inheritance with me. What do you mean? Tell your brother. He's a very rude, uh, uh, very rude guy in the crowd shouting and, and, and requesting and asking to Jesus to fix his problem. 
According to the law of the day, the elder brother received two thirds of the inheritance, and the younger brother、uh, received one third. This man、uh, did not ask Jesus to listen to both sides, and to make a righteous judgment. He asked Jesus to take side with him against his brother. That's the reason why he is asking, "Tell my brother." To divide the inheritance, you know what? In, immediately, Jesus knows. He knows his heart. He knows this man is more concerned about money than about the fair share, social justice, equal pay, and equal respect, or seeking for God's will or commitment. How come Jesus refused? To act as a judge in this in this situation, I don't want to deal with this. I don't want to talk about this because Jesus is not interested in the things of this world, like property or money. Money does not solve all the problems. Money creates problem. That is the reason why in verse 15 Jesus says, "Watch out! Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist." In an abundance of possessions, Jesus starts explaining the parable to the people. The rich man is a farmer. You know, we have a lot of farmers here. We have a, we, we take care of all the cattle here. He does not cheat anymore. He doesn't. He doesn't cheat. He doesn't steal. He does his job to get this fill. Or、well, he doesn't abuse his employee. He does not steal. Or、well, he does not. Right from the poor, God bless him with a right soil and sun and and rain as well. He becomes very rich, very very rich, so that he is thinking that, oh yeah, you know what? I have a lot of things. I have a lot of things in my pocket. You know, I am getting richer and richer, and I probably, you know, destroy my barn and I am going to build a bigger one. So that I can store all my goody and valuable stuff. In verse 19, he says to himself, "I have plenty of grain laid up for many years to come." This is very important. Take life easy. Eat and drink, and be merry. What does the rich man do? He pulled down his barn. He built. Really big one. Here is the farmer's dilemma: the more money he has, the more he becomes greedy. Let me tell you once again: the more money he has, the more he becomes selfish, self-centered. Let me ask you a question: Is being rich a sin? Is being rich a sin? Absolutely not. However, here's a question: Why does God say you fool in verse twenty? The rich man values his wealth the most. The rich man is becoming crazy about his wealth and money, all the property. It reminds me. The story reminds me of my son. You know, he likes ice cream. You know that. You know he likes ice cream. You know every night. Any any daddy and mom any dessert? Ice cream. Okay, bingo. So we we get him an ice cream. All of a sudden he is holding his ice cream. It's just like this. His favorite word, mine. And the other one is no way. Mine and no way. So he is holding his ice cream. I think he is crazy about his ice cream. Okay, he's looking at me not, right now. Okay, all right. Okay. <laughs> But all of a sudden, I ask him a question. Hey, you want to share with us? You want to share your ice cream with us? <laughs> he said. All of a sudden, he's becoming his. I don't know. I don't know who taught that. But you know what? Probably from from us, Esther, right? So all of a sudden, he's like, no. Why? 
he goes to Lincoln School, right? You know, it's like, you no, know, why? It's just like this. It, this is an Asian face, you know? Well, no way, you know? And all of a sudden, you don't want to share your ice cream. I don't want to share. Okay, you can eat everything. Next one. <laughs> he ate all. You know what? There is nothing wrong with being rich. But watch out. Because wealth can create snares and temptations. Wealth can bind, you know, blind your eyes. Wealth can give you a force and a wrong sense of security and directions. One of the sermons of the mountain in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 6, Jesus teaches his followers about giving to the needy and treasures in heaven. Let me explain this. Matthew chapter 6 verse 3 to 4. When you, give, when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your heavenly Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. Okay? All right. Do not store, do not store up for yourselves. Why don't you store up for yourselves in heaven? You cannot serve both God and money. Let me ask you a question. What do you value most in your life? You got to think about this question, critical question. What do you value most in your life? Probably desire, wealth, treasure. You know, money talks. You know, more money, more knowledge. You know, relationship, fun, job, family hobby, work, friends. There's nothing wrong with that. But in Matthew chapter 6, verse 21 is reminding each one of us, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Jesus concludes his preaching. He says, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness so that all things shall be added unto you. Watch out. I think, I think you've got to listen. I, I try to listen to what God is speaking to my heart. Watch out. The more you have money, the more you have position, the more you have a power, the more you have a knowledge, watch out. Anything except God can be an idol in your life, in my life. So every day I try to listen to what God is speaking to me. You know, I am here not for uh, store up everything for myself. I'm here. God has given me all the gift and knowledge and powers. And God has blessed me all the gift I have right now. But I am not going to store up everything for myself. I am willing to share my gift and talent and presence and time with my brothers and sisters in the world of today. If I think I am here for making money and using all the money and enjoying my life, done, no, this is not my purpose. My purpose here, I, God has given me a will. God has given me all the gift and all the, all the talent and all the powers. I, 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 I am a good, I am a good uh, 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 Christian. I am a good disciple of Jesus Christ. I need to, manage all the things wisely not only for myself for God's kingdom and for brothers and sisters in the community we live today the rich man the farmer in the parable views and values his wealth as an opportunity to please only himself he may have forgotten about giving and sharing his wealth with others the rich man is really really rich but he is bankrupt. He is dry and empty and thirsty and hungry and selfish spiritually. Jesus is pointing out his selfishness in his heart and rebuking his greedy heart as well. You know what? Uh, we're not called. Let me ask you. Let, let me tell you this. We're not called to store up our health, our, our wealth 
for ourselves. We are called to share what we have with other brothers and sisters. We are called to be generous. The parable of rich fool that is written only in the gospel of Luke. The gospel of Luke gives us a spiritual lesson that we as a Christians must be hungry for God. Not hungry for our desires, not hungry for our wealth and treasures on earth. We should not be greedy and we should not be self-centered, be fully aware of the danger of placing our value on our own secular desires or worldly positions. Let me, let me explain this. Everything we have is from God. Amen to that. Everything we have is from God. Gift. And, and how to value and use our gift wisely to make a difference. To lead people to Christ, to help people who are in need, to extend his mission and service for his kingdom. Brothers and sisters, friends, we cannot serve God or money at the same time. Giving is not one-time attitude. Giving is, giving is not one-time attitude. It is discipleship. It is lifestyle. You know what? Uh, use your God-given ability to help those who are in need. Use your time. Use your presence. Use your service. Use your gift and talent to meet the need for God and others. Not only practice your generosity at Christmas time, but as believers, we are generous because our God is generous. That's the only way we can be generous when we see and believe how generous he has been to us through his only begotten son. As we continue to be generous with his kingdom and mission and service and the people around us. Because, you know, why, why, do, we, why do we share? Because when we share, we grew up spiritually. When we share, not only gift, our time, our presence, our talent. We grew up and then we experience his presence and we truly become a true disciples of Jesus Christ. As we continue to be generous for his kingdom and service and mission, it transforms each one of us from the inside out. There is a power when we share. A lot of people think when we store up for ourselves, we think, we think we have a power. No. When we share, when we help, there is power. You know what? Thanksgiving is around the corner. I encourage each one of you not only count all your blessings God has given for you. It's a great way. You know, I, you know, I am very blessed because of all the things God has given for me. All the things God has done and God has given for my family, for our nation. I feel blessed. But beyond being blessed, be blessed to be a blessing to someone else today. Why don't you not only counting your blessings God has given, but, but be blessed to be a blessing to someone who doesn't have any uh, 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 bread to eat, who doesn't have any water, clean water to drink, who doesn't have any house to, to take a rest. There are a lot of people who don't have any money and, and who don't have any meal to eat. Think about all the people who are going through difficult time in this season. And, 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 and I encourage each one of you, be a blessing. You know, your time, your presence, your encouraging word, your gift, your talent for God, for church, for the community, for all the people who are going through in the world we live today. And then I just want to say, Happy Thanksgiving 
Don't fight, okay? All right? When you have a table, Thanksgiving, don't fight. Don't talk about all the politics and all the economies, all the crazy stuff. Talk about all the blessings God has given for you. And I encourage each one of you to be a blessing to someone else today. Can we all pray together? Let us pray. God, we give you thanks. We gather here as a church. And we pray that you will continue to guide us. And that you will make us to be generous. Generous people here in our community. God, we don't want to count all the blessings you have given for each one of us. Not only counting all the blessings you have given for each one of us. We want to be a blessing to someone else today. God, help us to share and help us to support. Help us to give what we have to the brothers and sisters who are going through a very, very difficult time. God, you put here on the earth, not only store up all the things for ourselves, our mission, our service, our calling is to share and manage all the things wisely for your kingdom and for your service as well. God, we love you. In Jesus' name, everybody say, Amen.